Signore e signori, buonasera. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New York University Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimont. As you might know, we have been closed uh, for almost two years. We are just getting restarted. And for our renaissance, I couldn't think of a better event than the presentation of this book um, by Michael Frank with Stella Levy. For those of you who are friends of the Casa, who are, come here regularly, Stella is a familiar face and a familiar presence. In her role as a member of the board of the Centro Primo Levi, she's a faithful uh, attendant of many of our events. And there is also another reason, aside from the fact that she's my favorite person, uh, uh, and that is uh, something I have to deal with. But there is also an important fact that is within the book, the reason why this book is presented here tonight. Because we can say that this book was born here, and Michael kindly remembers the first meeting that he had with Stella in our reading room in the library on the second floor, mm -hmm. uh, where randomly a well-known author meets this woman with an incredible story. They start chatting a bit in English, a bit in French, and then in Italian. And from that conversation, 100 Saturdays followed, uh, where Stella shared the memories of her life in the island of Rhodes and beyond that uh, with Michael. And the book is a treasure. We have copies there, I think they're selling out, but make sure you get your copy before you go. And Michael is, is a great writer, it's beautifully written, it's elegantly written as it fits to the, the character, the main character, the protagonist. And I have to say that I hear the voice of the author when I read it, but I also heard Stella's voice reading these lines. Because some of the stories I had the fortune of having heard them from Stella before. And I myself decided to take a trip to Rhodes because I wanted to see Stella's Island. For me, that's what Rhodes is. And this book really conveys the richness, the wealth um, of, of the past and of the present of this woman. And also, I think it's important that this event takes place here because one of the most dramatic events in Stella's life was when they took away from her the school. And for her, it was the Italian school in Rhodes. And I have the impression that when Stella comes here, we are somehow not giving back to her what was taken from her. Her 16 years old, Stella is not going to come back. But we are trying to give back to her what was taken from her that was Italian school and the books that she learned to love and the music that she learned to love and the things that still keep her company today in her days. Um, I just want to stop here because I could go on and on and on. Do buy the book. The book is a treat. You're going to love reading it and rereading it. And I want to welcome uh, next to me Natalia Indrimi, who is the director of the Centro Primo Levi here in New York. And uh, she's going to greet you and she's going to introduce Michael and Stella. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you all for being here to celebrate with us. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Stella. Uh, I love you and you have really built something very important um, for Cinto Primo Levi and for all the institutions and the people who, um, who work with us. Uh, I won't take um, much time because Michael and Stella have um, much better things to say. Uh, I want to just uh, remind um, us and everybody that uh, this work, the w Michael's work and Stella's work, come from love. Stella uh, has a, a saying that is a, la, a Ladino saying that is uh, Noa obra sin amor. And uh, it's very true. This has become a base of everything we do at Centro Primo Levi. And I think has extended to many of the friends and colleagues uh, who work with us. And uh, after these two years of isolation, of uh, being um, each, you know, in our homes on Zoom, not being able to uh, cross eyes with each other, I think that this element is really uh, the most important that I can think about, that I think of um, on this evening. And I thank you all, and I will pass the, Michael to the mic to Michael, who will uh, tell us, us a little bit about the book. Thanks. Seven years ago, when I sat down next to Stella at a lecture being given upstairs in this very building in the library, there was no way, I'm sure, that either of us could have seen forward to this evening as we celebrate all of the talking and listening and a little bit of the arguing 
and a lot more listening and some writing that would follow. Stella has given me, and at this point, I think it's fair to say not just me, the gift of her story. With it, this Scheherazade of Greenwich Village, as I like to call her, originally of the Judidia of Rhodes, has offered us an unforgettable account of a once vivid but now vanished world and the dynamic young woman who came of age in it, who went on to endure some of the hardest experiences imaginable, and yet afterward, as she said to me just last week, chose to live. Stella, your choice to live has enriched and transformed my life. Thank you for our Saturdays. Thank you, Stefano, for making Casa such a gift to New York City and for this evening. Lots of thanks. Natalia, Indrimi, and Alessandro Cassin for Centro Primo Levi, which not only organized that lecture seven years ago and so many unforgettable evenings before and since, but for also being such indefatigable supporters of this project. Thank you to Sally Wofer Gerand. I hope she's here somewhere and can hear, or will be told anyway if she can't, for being so perspicacious and unsparing, and for managing to bring out of the wilderness of the pandemic Lauren Wien, the best, most insightful editor imaginable for this project. At Avid Reader Press, Lauren has been supported, as so have I been, by Jofi Ferrari Adler, Ben Lohman, of course, Katya, Amy, Juliana, Catherine, Jordan, Caroline, Alexandra, Margot, and Meredith. And if I've forgotten anybody, please <laughs> forgive me. Thank you, Myra Kalman, for the beautiful paintings based on photographs that managed to survive Stella's childhood and youth and later period. Uh, they lend an atmosphere of magic to the book. Thank you to Alex Kalman for design and help with the little documentary we made about Stella. And thank you to all the writers who offered such generous comments on the book as it was going into publication. I also want to thank my stalwart folk who are here tonight. Joanne. Lucia, Sophie. Jane, and beaming in, in spirit from other locales, Steve, Marona, Andrea, and closer by, of course, Kamuji. And my friends, so many of you here tonight, I would name you all if I could. As 100 Saturdays has been finding its way into the world, I've been thinking a lot about an essay by uh, Walter Benjamin from 1936. I've been citing it right and left. In it, Benjamin speaks about the fundamental role storytelling has played in humanity's household, a phrase I just love. He writes at one point that the storyteller finds his material in experience, his own and what he has learned secondhand. And the stories he tells, Benjamin writes, in turn become experience for his audience. I take this to mean that we all become the stories that we hear, which means Cara Stella, that you are now part of all of us. Beati noi. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here at Casa Italiana, where Stefano Albertini, who is a great friend, <laughs> has made a home for us all. I am deeply touched by your presence, I see so many friends and family members, too many to mention, but I see you. Grazie al console Italia. Some people can sit down and write their own story. For me, it has been a long process that involved many years, the precious help of a few special friends and much self-examination. My recollections are vivid and precise, but memory is a complex and mysterious entity. 20 years ago, meeting Natalia in Dreamy allowed me to begin this process. Why her? She spoke Italian. 
knew the history, asked all the right questions. Most importantly, she was interested in me and accepted me with an open heart. Over the years, the work of Centro Primo Levi, directed by Natalia and by Alessandro Cassin, created an environment where I could reflect on and organize my own experience. Finally, the chance encounter with Michael Frank <laughs> make me ready and eager to retell the stories that shaped my life once again. Michael took the time to listen and ask me to tell the stories over and over again until he understood all the intricacies. He even traveled to Rhodes. Thank you, Michael. Initially, my intention was to describe only my early life in Rhodes and that of our Jewish community there. But Michael is very determined <laughs> and managed to convince me to discuss not only my deportation, but the entire arch of my life. Perhaps he was right. So much has been written about concentration camps that I feel no need to add my personal experience. But I feel strongly that few people have heard the story of the small Jewish community of Rhodes. By August 1944, the Germans almost were losing the war. Yet, they traveled to a far little island located where Europe turned into Asia Minor to take 1,700 of us Jews, primarily women, children, and elderly, and transport them all the way to Poland to be killed. Why didn't they kill us in Rhodes? I have lived most of my life in New York, but I am still the little girl and the young woman from Rhodes you will find in this book. I hope my beloved son, John, who is here with me, and his children will recognize in that girl his mother and their grandmother, Stella. I feel the book is my link to the community and family I loved so much, and an introduction to that forgotten world for the generations to come. Thank you. We have a little bit of music now. Yes, I'd like to introduce Daphna Moore, who also came through a, a network of love and friendship. He's here, David Rubin is here, who uh, connected us to Daphna when we did the installation on the Jews of Rhodes, Los Corazones Avalon, um, right before the pandemic. And I want to say the, the music was such a, an important and crucial element of Jewish life in Rhodes, as it's a crucial element of life everywhere, and that um, still I remember so many of the melodies and the, and the songs of the, and the liturgical songs that her father sang three times a day, and also the romances and the, and the songs, the love songs and adventure songs that her mother and her sisters and all the women sang after Shabbat, sitting in front of the house. And so Dafta knows this tradition very well. She is this tradition for us, and uh, she will sing some of them. Yeah. <laughs> novia como se llama la cabeza esto no se llama cabeza sino campos espacial ay mi campos espacial viva la novia con el novio han si dice la nuestra novia como se llama 
los cabellos. Esto no se llama cabellos si lo brillas de labrar, a mi brillas de labrar, a mi campo es especial, viva la novia con el novio. I'm going to sing Los Bilbilicos, but I'm going to actually uh, use Hebrew words for Tzur Michelo. So you can, nine, nine, it's, it, it is one of the most famous melodies. So feel free to nine, 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 sing along, uh, clap, dance if you have place. Yeah. 
llama mi ventura está en tu And now it wouldn't be a party if it weren't something to eat and to drink. And so enjoy. I know we are uh, packed because there are so many. Uh, Stella's fan club is already big. It's going to become huge after people read the book. And we are delighted to be here with her, her family, with Michael to celebrate. By the way, Michael is seated on the floor, a la turca. And you need to, and you need to read the book to understand what a la turca means. But you are welcome to follow his example. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Evviva Stella. Thank you.